Caterpillar is currently sitting right about at its fair value. Uh, we're coming up with a calculation of $259 for the fair value, with the stock price sitting just shy of $261. So it sits within $5 of the fair value, and it, it might be worth taking a look into. Is, is there enough growth in this stock that it's worthwhile to be purchasing at the fair value? Do we wait for a lower price, or do we just avoid it altogether? So if this is a stock that you own, please drop a like. If you like content like this, or want to follow along on this stock or some of the others that we take a look at on the channel, uh, subscribe and let's get right into things. So earnings yield on this one looks pretty good. 5.3% above that five that we're looking for. We really wanted to see $13 and four cents in earnings per share. And we're getting last year, 1273 this year, 1996 is what's expected from analysts. So that looks very good. And even down here we have, for the current share price, we'd want to see at least thirteen seventy three. It's blowing that out of the water, which is one of the first times we've really seen that. Cash flow yield looks really good, eight point six nine. Average is eight point nine nine, so it is a little bit lower than it's typically been. And there is no huge concern there. It kind of just wavers between eight and ten percent. If it comes in at nine percent cash flow yield for this year, uh, we'd be looking at six billion dollars in free cash flow for the company and we'd want to see 6.7 to really justify the current share price on a cash flow front so it is a little low for that uh, 13 dollars and four cents per share is what that would break down to and then on the balance sheet front uh, we'd want to see 86 dollars and 96 cents in net assets per share uh, so that would break down to about $45 billion in net assets. And this is where things are not looking too hot is on the balance sheet front. Last year, they came in at 81.9 for the assets, 66 for the liabilities. So we're looking at something more along the lines of the mid-teens for the net assets per share. So this is significantly low. They'd need to drop their liabilities by about $20 billion to really hit that. So the earnings are what's really driving this company. And then for the dividend, uh, it's come across my radar a few times as a dividend stock. I've held it in the past as a dividend stock. Uh, we're looking at a yield of 1.91 currently, a little bit lower than what it has been historically. So the price is a little elevated compared to how it typically performs. Payout ratio, 36%. So they do have room to grow that. That, that looks like a pretty good dividend. 36% payout ratio. They've been growing it faster more recently, about 8%. So we're going to plug in 7 for our projections over here, the midpoint over the past few years. ROE looks very high because of the high debt. They have a debt to equity of 4.16, which right off the bat disqualifies for, based on my criteria, uh, a value criteria. The debt's just too high to be buying. ROI, 6.81%. Pretty low, honestly. And then ROA, 8.18%. That's, that's kind of reasonable. So I don't like the ROI or the debt to equity here. And for that reason, I'm out. I sold out of my, I've so, so bought in and sold out of this stock a few times in the past, but after doing this, I know that there are better companies for me to be putting my money into. Go look at the videos on Microsoft and Google that we did recently, and you'll see exactly what it is that we're looking for. I'd much rather have my money in them than uh, I would in Caterpillar, just for what they can do with that money. Gross profit, right about where it typically sits, 29.5. Net, 11.28, up a bit from what they have in the past. So looks like they are cleaning up their margins a little bit, getting that operations more streamlined. Revenue growth, they did not have a good time when COVID started. So They've bounced back since then, 19.3%. Analysts are projecting 13% over the next year. And then two years out, only 8.2%. So over here on what we think is going to happen with the stock, let's say they can continue with that 8% that's projected out for two years. 
for the next five. Tack a few more years onto that, and let's see what that does for the valuation here. Earnings per share, again, COVID, and then a huge boom afterwards. Analysts are projecting 57% this year, 28% next year. So they are, it is looking like they're projecting a bit of a slowdown in the growth, but it's still massive growth. Cash flow growth, 10.7% is really good over the last two years. Share count, they've been buying back to 2.5%. Assets, they've been growing that about two and a quarter. Liabilities, just shy of two and a half. And then dividend, they've been growing it, let's say, 7, 8%. So if we take similar numbers to that, we'll start with a lower revenue. 8%. That's what expected by analysts two years out. Share count, they'll buy back 2%. Assets, grow them too. Liabilities, grow them too. And dividend, raise that 7%. So where would that take us in the next three years? So we're talking 2026 we'd be looking at a intrinsic fair value for the stock of about $249 at that time. So you'd have a profit of $4.44 or a gain of 2%. And that's based off buying the stock right now, collecting the dividends over those three years. So things do not look great there. Uh, that's why we typically look for a margin of safety. 15% is usually what we go with. So if we were to switch this to our buy target around 220 you see better numbers 45 83 for profit which is 18 percent but spy is still doing 26 percent so we need something better than that five years out let's do an apples to apples comparison change that to the 220 years falling six percent shy of spy over the same time period and you're getting an average return of 9%. So you need something a little bit lower than 220. 220 is probably the baseline that you want to get. Right around 200 would be ideal. You'd be performing in line with SPY at 200, both three and five year, as long as they're coming in with these numbers here. But let's say things aren't going to slow down. They can get 10% revenue growth. Well, now we're good on the five years. We're still 6% shy on the three-year uh, if you buy at 220. 11%. We gained 1% down here, but we're still falling behind the market on a three-year basis. So if you're trying to hold this for the long term and you think that they're going to come in with double-digit growth for the next five years on revenue and they continue how they have with everything else, you're probably going to perform on par with the market, maybe a bit better. Your average return is going to be up about 11% per year. If they can get back to 13%, that's expected this year, hold that for the next five years. You're still 2% shy on the three-year, but you're, now you're 10% ahead on the five-year. And what if they can come back with 19, as they've been doing more recently? And you're, you're golden. You're beaten... Three year, you're beating the market by 6%. And five year, you're beating the market by 33% with an average return of 17%. So just to be fair, I think 10%. If you're holding it long term, buying it at 220 is probably going to be the price target there. It's been as low as 172 this year. If you bought back at that point, uh, you're you're going to be sitting pretty pretty good. If you bought back at that 172, just about 173, and they come in with that 10%, you're looking at 38% gains over the next three years, 65 over the next five years. So you're beating out the market pretty well, almost 50% better than the market. The trends here look about as we would expect. Nice revenue growth, cost of goods, no major jumps here. The gross net and EBIT, we see a very similar trend to the revenues. Balance sheet, kind of stagnant on those assets and liabilities. It's only 2%, so it's no huge movement there. 
they do have positive tangible assets and a positive tangible book value, which is a requirement that we do really look for here. Cash flows, we see some really good growth, great cash flows, great dividend, great dividend growth. If you want it as a dividend stock, probably not bad. It's just about buying at the right price. And as we're seeing, 220 is probably the long-term right price. Today's prices are pretty elevated, especially with the market going the way that it is and how high their debt is. If interest rates are going to hold higher for longer, they're probably going to be one of the stocks that are going to take a pretty big beating. We do see some great growth across the board for everything here. Balance sheet is really weighing it down with all that debt. And then cash flows, not looking half bad. Getting up to 250 in 2024. The dividend going to bring 240 in value in 2024. The fair value at that point will be around 290 because the earnings are just growing so much. And if they can raise their margins, uh, things will look even better. So have they been able to raise their net margin at all? 11.3, 7.2, 12.7, 11.3. So no, not really. Maybe they can get it up to 12, squeeze a little bit out because that's the big thing that's going to help them. If they can raise their margins by 1%, they don't need to raise their revenue quite so much. And that's what we're looking at for this stock. So it depends on your time frame and what exactly you're looking to get out of the stock. Strong cash flows, strong dividend. Really good in the range of dividend stocks. But if you have patience, you can probably get it at a better price with the way that the market and the economy is looking. Uh, if you want just long-term hold exposure again you'd want to get it around 220 personally when i ran the numbers here i sold out because i still hold some stocks for the dividend when i was a, div a strict dividend investor in the past and now that i'm digging into them i don't like this debt to equity i don't like this roi i found other companies where I can get better fundamentals out of them. So I'm going to put that money in there and hopefully get some better growth out of them as well. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Like if you enjoyed the video, comment what other stocks we should look at and subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything. And I'll catch you next time.